Hi guys. Obviously, Roll Dolls Are All For The Witches is the title and the illustrator, the person who draws the pictures is Quinton Blake. Now, we are on the chapter, The Ancient Ones. Is it a long chapter? Who knows? Uh, so, remember Bruno's just been turned into a mouse. The Grand High Witch stood on the very centre of the platform and those dangerous eyes of her travelled slowly around the audience of witches who were sitting so meekly, meekly quiet. Doesn't want, don't want to disturb anything. Before her, all of those, all of, all of those over 70, put up your hands, she barked suddenly. Seven or eight hands went up in the air. It comes to me, said the Grand High Witch, that you ancient ones will not be able to climb high trees in search of gruntle eggs. We won't, your grandness. We're afraid we won't, chanted the ancient ones. So ones over 70 are called the ancient. Ancient means old. Picture. Nor will you be able to catch the crab cruncher who lives high up in the rocky cliffs. The Grand High Witch went on. I can't exactly see you sprinting after the speedy cat Springer either, or diving into deep waters to spear the blabbersnatch, or striding the bleak moors with a gun under your arm to shoot the grubble squirt. You are too old and feeble for those things. Feeble, weak. We are, chanted the ancient ones. We are, we are. You ancient ones have served me well over the years, the Grand High Witch said. And I do not wish to deny you the pleasure of bumping off a few thousand children each just because you have become old and feeble. So I don't want to stop you killing children just because you're a little bit old. I have therefore prepared personally with my own hands a limited quantity of delayed action mouse maker, which I will distribute to the ancient ones before you leave the hotel. Oh, thank you, thank you, cried the old witches. You are far too good to us, your grandness. You are so kind and thoughtful. Here is a sample of what I am going to give you, shouted the Grand High Witch. She fished around in the pocket of her dress and brought out a very small bottle. She held it up and shouted, In this bottle is 500 doses of mouse maker. It is enough to turn 500 children into mice. I could see that the bottle was made of dark blue glass and that it was very small, about the same size as the ones you can buy at the chemist with nose drops in them. Each of you ancient ones will get two of these bottles each, she shouted. Thank you, thank you, O oh most generous and thoughtful one, chorused the ancient witches. Not one, not one drop will be wasted. Each of us will promise to squish and squallop and squiggle 1,000 children. Our meeting is over, announced the Grand High Witch. Here is the timetable for the remainder of your stay in this hotel. Right now, we must all go out to the Sunshine Terrace and have tea with that ridiculous manager. Next, at six o'clock tonight, those witches who are too old to climb trees after gruntle eggs will report to my room to receive two bottles each of mouse maker. My room is number 454, do not forget it. Then at eight o'clock, all of you will assemble in the dining room for supper. We are the lovely ladies of the RSPCC and they are setting up two long tables, especially for us. But do not forget to put the cotton plugs up your nose. That dining room will be full of filthy little children and without those plugs, the stink will be unbearable. So they need to plug their noses. Apart from that, remember to behave normally at all times. Is everything clear? Any question? I have one question, your grandness, said a voice in the audience. What happens if one of the chocolates we are giving away in our shop gets eaten by a grown-up? That's just too bad for the grown-up, said the Grand High Witch. This meeting is over, so if a grown-up eats it, they turn into a mouse as well. Out you go. The witches stood up and began gathering their things together. I was watching them through the crack, hoping to heaven they would hurry up and leave so that might be safe at last. Wait! shrieked one of the witches in the back row. Hold everything! 
Her shrieking voice echoed through the ballroom like a trumpet. All the witches suddenly stopped and turned and looked towards the speaker. She was one of the taller witches and I could see her standing there with her head tilted back and her nose in the air. And she was sucking in great long breaths of air through those curvy pink seashell nostrils of hers. Wait! She shouted again. What is it? The others cried out. Dog's droppings! She yelled. Just then, I got... Oh no. Just then, I got a whiff of dog's droppings! Look, that's her with her nose sniffing the air. Surely not! The others shouted. There couldn't be! Yes! Yes! Shouted the first witch. There it is! Again! It's not strong, but it's there. I mean, it's here. It's definitely somewhere, not too far away. What's going on down there? Shouted the Grand High Witch, glaring down from the platform. Mildred's just got a whiff of dog droppings, your grandness. Someone called back to her. What rubbish is this? Shouted the Grand High Witch. She has dog droppings on the brain. There are no children in this room. Hang on, cried the witch called Mildred. Hang on, everybody. Don't move. I'm getting it again. Her huge curvy nose holes were waving in and out like a pair of fishtails. It's getting stronger. It's hitting me harder now. Can't the rest of you smell it? All the noses of all the witches in that room went up in the air and all the nostrils began to suck and sniff. She's right, called another voice. She's absolutely right. Dog's droppings it is. Strong and foul. Foul, sorry, disgusting. In a matter of seconds, the entire assembly of witches had taken up the dreaded cry of dog's droppings. Dog's droppings, they shouted. The room is full of it. Poo, poo, Woo! Why did we not, why did we not smell it before? It stinks like a sewer. Some little swine must be hiding not so very far away from here. Find it, screamed the Grand High Witch. Track it down, trootle it out. Follow your noses till you get it. The hairs on my head were standing up like the bristles of a nail brush and a cold sweat was breaking out all over me. Rottle it out, this small lump of dung, screeched the Grand High Witch. Don't let it escape. If it's in here, it has observed the most secret things. It must be exterminated immediately. Killed right now. And that is the end of the chapter. But it's, I mean, we've only had eight minutes and that doesn't seem fair. So I will start the next chapter. And the next chapter is called Metamorphosis. Now metamorphosis means changing. I remember thinking to myself, there is no escape for me now. Even if I make a run for it and manage to dodge a lot of them, I still won't get out because the doors are chained and locked. I'm finished. I'm done for. Oh, Grandma, what are they going to do to me? I looked round and saw a hideous, painted and powdered witch's face staring down at me. And the face opened its mouth and yelled, It's here! It's behind the screen! Come and get it! The witch reached out a gloved hand and grabbed me by the hair, but I twisted free and jumped away. I ran. Oh, how I ran. The sheer terror of it all, all put wings on my feet. So basically made him fly. I flew around the outside of the great ballroom and not one of them had a chance of catching me. As I came level with the doors, I paused and tried to open them, but the big chain was on them and they didn't even rattle. The witches were not bothering to taste me. They simply stood there in small groups, watching me and knowing for certain that there was no way I could escape. Several of them were holding their nose with gloved fingers and there were cries of, Poo! What a stink! We can't stand this much longer! Catch it then, you idiots! Screamed the Grand High Witch from up on the platform. Spread out in a line across the room and close in on it and grab it. Corner its filthy little gumboil and seize it and bring it here to me. The witches spread out as they were told. They advanced, walked towards me. From somewhere, 
from some from one end, some from the other, and some came down the middle between two rows of empty chairs. They were bound to get me now. They had me cornered. From sheer and absolute terror, I began to scream, Help! I screamed, turning my head towards the door in hope that somebody outside might hear me. Help! 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 Get it! shouted the Grand High Witch. Grab hold of it! Stop it yelling! They rushed at me then, and about five of them grabbed me by the arms and legs and lifted me clear off the ground. I went on screaming, but one of them clapped a glove hand over my mouth, and that stopped me. Bring it here! Look, there they are, all bringing him over. Shouted the Grand High Witch, bring the spying little worm up to me here. I was, I, I was carried to the platform with my arms and legs held tight by, my, by many hands and I lay there suspended in air facing the ceiling. I saw the Grand High Witch standing over me grinning at me in the most horrible way. She held up the small blue bottle of mouse maker and she said, now for a little medicine. Hold his nose to make him open his mouth. Strong fingers pinched my nose. I kept my mouth tight, closed tight and held my breath, but I couldn't do it for long. My chest was bursting. I opened my mouth to get one big, quick breath of air, and as I did so, the Grand High Witch poured the entire contents of the little bottle down my throat. Oh, the pain and the fire. It felt as though a kettle full of boiling water had been poured into my mouth. My throat was going up in flames. Then, very quickly, the frightful burning, searing, scorching started spreading down my chest and into my tummy and on and on into my arms and legs and all over my body. I screamed and screamed, but once again the gloved hands was clapped over my lips. The next thing I felt was my skin beginning to tighten. How else could I describe it? It was quite literally a tightening and shrinking of all the skin all over my body, from top of my head to the tips of my fingers to the ends of my toes. I felt it as though I was a balloon and somebody was twisting the top of the balloon and twisting and twisting and the balloon was getting smaller and smaller and the skin was getting tighter and tighter and soon I was going to burst. Then the squeezing began. This time I was inside a suit of iron and somebody was turning the screw. With each turn of the screw, the iron suit became smaller and smaller so that I was squeezed like an orange into a pulpy mess with the juice running out my sides. After that came a fierce, hard, prickling sensation all over my skin or what was left of my skin as though tiny needles were forcing their way out through the surface of the skin from inside. And this, I realise now, was the growing of the mouse fur. Far away in the distance, I heard the voice of the Grand High Witch yelling, 500 doses! This stinky little carbuncle has 500 doses and the alarm clock has been smashed and now we are instantaneous action! I heard clapping and cheering and I remember thinking, I'm not myself any longer. I've gone clear out of my own skin. I noticed that the floor was only an inch away from my nose. I noticed also a pair of little fairy front paws resting on the floor. I was able to move those paws. They were mine. At that moment, I realised I was not a little boy any longer. I was a mouse. Now for the mouse trap, I heard the Grand High Witch yelling. I've got it right here, and here's a piece of cheese. But I wasn't going to wait for that. I was off across the platform like a streak of lightning. I was astonished, shocked, by my own speed. I leapt over the witch's feet, right and left, and in no time I was down the steps and onto the floor of the ballroom itself and skittering off among the rows of chairs. What I was especially like was that the fact that I made no sound at all as I ran. I was a swift and silent mover. And quite amazingly, the pain had all gone now. That's him running. I was feeling quite remarkably well. It's not a bad thing after all, I thought to myself, to be tiny as, as well as speedy when there's a bunch of dangerous females after your blood. I select selected the back leg of a chair and squeezed up against it and kept very still. 
In the distance, the Grand High Witch was shouting, Leave the little stink pot alone. It's not worth bothering about. It's only a mouse now. Somebody else will soon catch it. Let us get out of here. The meeting is over. Unlock the doors and shove off the Sunshine Terrace to have tea with that idiotic manager. And the next chapter will be called Bruno. But we shall leave it there for today. Have a nice evening, guys, or day, or whatever. I hope you're as comfortable as I am. You can see I'm wearing my massive jumper. Have a nice day. Bye.